Practicing anything is the only way to get better at whatever you're attempting to do. So seeing as how we're talking about the guitar, I thought I would just talk a little bit about um, my the way I like to practice and the way I look at practicing. And then you're going to see a, a, a video of me practicing and there'll be some comments made about it and whatnot. But um, I think practicing is one of those things that, that some people love, some people hate, some people don't know how to do it. You know, it's a variety of things that go into play there. So I have found that um, through, through my uh, years of playing the guitar, the one thing that I've had to do is realize that I need a space. So in, in my room right now, this this is where I practice at, and I've, I've got an amp set up. <clears throat> I've got a music stand. If you don't read music, you may not need that. But I've got music um, that, I'm, that I'm working on and a music stand here. And my guitar, one or two of them are usually s setting up um, waiting for me to caress them. So if I have to set everything up every time I want to practice, it's going to probably make it such that, that, that I will maybe not do it every day. So if, the, if my guitar is there and I see it, I want to touch it. Um, if my amp is there, it doesn't take anything to, to turn it on and, and uh, play with it if I want to use an amp. Um, the other side of the room, I've got my computer, um, and um, and behind me, I've, I've got turntable and a, a CD player, because um, you know it's important to to listen to music and to play along and transcribe and things. So I, I like to have that where I can. If you have um, a, a house or an apartment where you live where there's not enough space to have a separate room at least maybe a corner where you can leave a guitar and a chair and, and something set up to where it'll spurn you to practice is a really great idea. The other thing about practicing <clears throat> that comes to mind to me is that, what do you practice? Well, first of all, um, we're all different um, and there is no one thing that's gonna work for everybody. But the thing that is going to work for everybody is, is to practice every day as much as you possibly can to practice daily. And I think that it's more effective to play an hour a day, every day, or at least six days a week or so, than it is to miss some days and then try to make up by, by doing a long practice session. That doesn't really do as much good for you. And it also might uh, enable you to have some muscle tendon kind of in injuries and things. So I think that uh, putting your practice time on a daily basis, um, even if it's <clears throat> a short amount of time, you, is better than, um, than, than not getting to it for days. So I would like to say that the minimum could be an hour. And maybe you don't have an hour all at once, maybe you have a half an hour in the morning, half hour in the evening, I don't know. For me, um, I think as a as one that's aspiring to play really well, two to four hours a day um, was what I did. Um, and sometimes I'd have two hours in the morning, sometimes two hours in the evening. Um, and um, so anyway, consistency when practicing is important. Um, what to practice? Um, I, I look at kind of three avenues of playing. One is that you need to get the fundamentals um, um, on, the, on the guitar as solid as you can. Um, and no matter what style you play in, that, that really is talking about scales and arpeggios, um, intervals, patterns, um, things like that, where you really work on, on, an, on an idea or a scale for a long period of time. Repetition is is really important to uh, to get muscle memory going. Repetition is really uh, the key for your mind and for your for your hands. So um, I then also um, I'm working on songs. Um, it's really important to, to to have stuff to play. You know, you have you have some songs to play. Um, someone asks you, hey, play something for me. And you got nothing to play but but some sort of you know mindless 
you know music store jam um it might you might want to have a song to play you know um and that's so i work on songs my teacher uh, when i was younger jim atkins had me doing um standards um and and working on a lot of them and so you know i knew quite a few by high school but at any rate, um, whatever you play, whether it's blues or whether it's rock and roll or country, I mean, there are tunes and songs within within all those genres, and it's it's good to be working on a tune over and over again until you have it down. Melody, so that you can play the melody on the guitar. Chords, so that you can uh, play a, a, a comping part or, you know, rhythm guitar. And for the you jazz player aficionados, um, being able to harmonize a melody um, is, is, is really important. So those are sort of the, and for me, I also practice reading. So I like to play Bach and I like to play uh, um, some classical guitar things, um, you know, the uh, uh, Fernando Sor uh, studies and things like that were really important to me, especially early in my, my uh, uh, education. Now I basically am, am practically motivated, and some of you might need that also, is that I've got a gig coming up and, and maybe there's a band that I've, I need to know some of their music better. So my practice time is centered around learning that music. Um, it might not, that might be the sole thing I'm doing um, for a recording session or for a gig or whatever. Um, it's, it might change the way I practice so that I spend more time with the stuff I need to get done for the next gig. So um, the last thing I want to say is that um, when you think about acquiring skill on your instrument, I think it's important to look for a good teacher. If you can find someone in your area or, or whether maybe you can do something on, on Skype um, if you can't if you don't have someone in your area. but I think it's really important to be accountable to a person. You can do things like what I'm doing right now and look at tutorials and, and learn things, but uh, it's a lot b more effective for you to go back to a person and, and show them what you have done to work on the, on the material that they've assigned to you. And then they can look and make suggestions at your, hand te at your hands and your technique and whatnot. And, and, um, and, and the goal is to get a good teacher. So if you have a university where there's a music program near you, that's a good place to start. See if they have a jazz program or a rock program or something where you can uh, find a, a teacher or maybe a grad student teacher. Um, that's a good place to look. Some music stores have good teachers. A lot of them don't, but so you got to be careful on that. Same thing with the internet. There's good teaching and there's not good teaching. Um, so you have to have to use some discernment. So practicing, uh, for me, I also am practicing playing. Because if I don't practice playing in a musical way, when I'm, then I'm going to, when I play, sound more like I'm practicing. So my practice sessions um, now, maybe they weren't right at the beginning, but right now they're geared on trying to make music out of all of the things that I'm doing to keep myself together. So I love practicing. And um, I learned to love practicing because I love the, the sound of the guitar. I love the way it feels when I touch the guitar. You know, I love the way the guitar looks. It's beautiful, especially this guitar. It's really beautiful. Um, so, hey, practicing. So um, hang around and, and there's a, a video that's going to start in a little bit of, of me actually practicing um, with some comments that I'm going to make alongside it. This video is filmed and recorded live with no do-overs. The specific routine was to start playing shapes and patterns to warm up, followed by a movement from J.S. Bach's Violin Partita in B minor, which is one of my favorites. Then play and practice a tune. In my normal practice time, I play a lot of tunes, and someday that's all I play, which would include standards, jazz heads, and my original music. There are 24 different fingering patterns alternating left-hand fingers. I am playing through two shapes.
first, two, three, one, four, ascending, four, one, three, two, descending on three adjacent string sets, and later, one, two, three, four, ascending, and four, three, two, one, descending. I sweep down with the pick when ascending, and sweep up when descending. Notice that I utilize some space between phrases or in the midst of the pattern. I always incorporate improvisation in some way, even when I am playing what could be a mindless exercise. These are a few ideas I've used for a long time, taken from Thesaurus of Scales and Melodic Designs, written by Nicholas Slonimsky. It was originally written for composers. When I was younger, I found out John Coltrane worked out of it, and so I acquired a copy. The patterns are written for piano on a grand staff, so there is some adaptation in octave placement for guitar. Minor scale is a rich resource for a variety of harmonic settings. I have always practiced scales with intervallic permutations. This is A flat melodic minor in thirds, followed by a brief free improvisation using that scale.
use the note B to start the next phrase, which is the third of A flat minor, to set up B minor with a pentatonic and melodic minor phrase. Instead of just starting the corante from the B minor partita, a transition and modulation makes practicing much more musical. I would always like to play everything as perfect as I can or desire to. However, there are several mistakes in this rendition which I used to practice continuity and playing through my mistakes because I have to do that when performing. And maybe I'm the only one that knows. Time Remembered was written by Bill Levins. I recorded eight choruses to demonstrate working on specific aspects of the song. It starts on a B minor chord, so it makes sense to transition from Bach to Bill Evans from the same key relationship. I often link a song or two together on performances. When I was a young student, Jim Atkins always had me learn melody before putting chords with it. Guitarists get very attached to our worked out harmonization, which may not work in every performance setting. So here I begin with a single string melody. And then a harmonization of that melody. chords with intervals of a fifth. It's the root of each chord followed by the fifth with a variety of rhythmic placements. Now I am arpeggiating extension arpeggios freely 
not restricting myself to the amount of time the chord gets in the tune. up scalar ideas and arpeggios and some triads. It's important to practice comping as much or more than soloing. People like it if you make them sound good when you play under their solo well. to hear melodies and resolutions rather than practice the harmony. on a gig, I go out with the harmonized melody again. Mm -hmm. 